Hi, I'm Chuck Olenek. I'm a reenactor. That means I wear funny clothes that don't belong to this century. And I try to breathe life into the past. And for 36 years, I did that in the classroom, dressing up fairly regularly and having my students gawk and stare. But it was an effort to make the subject less dead than the people we were studying. And now after a career of uh, teaching, plus also being in a historical reenactment organization, I have time on my hands. I also have a room full of garb. I have a passion for bringing the past to life. And I have a desire to preserve landmarks. And that's actually pretty important for today's installment of what I very pretentiously like to call my mission odyssey. The odyssey is about visiting each of the 21 or 23 missions in Alta, California. So since there's controversy, automatically you've got to go there and try to film that or document it. Um, the Asistencias, those are the spin-off missions. The Estancias, those were the ranches that were designed to support the missions. And the Presidios, those were the places that were set up to protect the missions. And as I've been visiting the different places in an order that I pretty much conceived of, I came across something that there's been controversy about, you know, the Father Sarah statues and removing them. Oh, by the way, I am filming this on Indigenous Peoples Day, so I think that's very appropriate because this is the installment that's going to cover the Tongva. I also, when I was traveling earlier for one of the videos, I ended up hearing about the uh, fire, the terrible fire that happened at uh, Mission San Gabriel. And today's installment is a continuation of my exploration of Mission San Gabriel. So I hope you stick with me on this journey. major group living in the Los Angeles Basin and on the Southern Channel Islands were called the Tongva or are called the Tongva and then I learned just recently a more proper name would be the Keech and this was a hunting gathering society they lived off of acorns and pine nuts and uh, small game and deer, you know, as far as the land-based groups and towards the coast, shellfish and sea mammals and fish where they could get them. And this is another one of those societies in balance. What ended up happening though, when the Spanish came in within two years there were four missions and the Keech or Tongva were enslaved. Oh, and um, the Spanish at first referred to them as Quicheneros, and later that got changed to Gabrieleno. Tovangar, the land of the Tongva, had four sacred mountains, Mount Baldi, Mount Saddleback, Mount San Gorgonio, Mount San Jacinto and four sacred rivers, the Los Angeles River, the Rio Hondo, the San Gabriel River, the Santa Ana River. It stretched from Palos Verdes to San Bernardino, from Saddleback Mountain to the San Fernando Valley, and had about 5,000 Tongva spread between 100 villages and speaking about half a dozen dialects. Self-sufficiency was the goal. The Padres established what they thought of as a manual training school to teach the Tongva their style of agriculture, 
the raising and care of livestock, and the mechanical arts. And the missions using the labor of the neophytes produced everything they used and consumed. By 1811, they were probably able to sustain the entire military and civil government of California. How bad could that be? So, anthropologist mode, or actually immigrant mode too, is when I was taught the, the, about the missions you know, in elementary school, back when rocks were soft, and you can tell it was a while ago, right? Look at this stuff, okay? Um, I was pretty much given the impression, as a lot of the kids were at that time, that, oh, the Spanish came in and, you know, they taught the poor, benighted, you know, native Californians about agriculture and about Spanish culture and about Christianity. And they very calmly and placidly took this in and went, yes, this is good. We live better now, which really wasn't the case, but that is what we were taught. There were over 25,000 baptisms you know, between 1771, when Mission San Gabriel Archangel was founded, and 1834, when it was secularized, and that stuff ended. And that would give you the idea, oh, everything was peaceful. The Tongva or the Quiche had accepted the way of life here. That wasn't really the case. And there's an example of an uprising that started to take place October 25th, 1785. Tongva from six or seven different villages had gathered together and they were going to attack the mission, but the Spanish found out and that ended real fast. And 20 of the conspirators, that's a loaded word, were captured, including one of their leaders who was a woman it was also a religious figure. Uh, she was named uh, Toipurina. And as to Toipurina's eventual fate, she became a Christian, married a Spaniard. Forcibly baptized, many now regard her as a symbol of Tonga resistance to the missions. So as the missions begin to prosper and more Estancia's get established and the wealth of the missions grows and by the way mission san gabriel was one of the most productive of the missions if not the most productive of the missions there were you know, estancias established in different areas but now they're going to take another step an estancia that was out towards the redlands area 55 miles away is going to be growing up into an Asestancia, a spin-off mission. And that uh, will be Asestancia San Bernardino de Sena. Originally an Estancia to raise cattle, this was also supposed to be part of an inland chain of missions when it became an Asestancia. And this was to bring the Cahuilla and the Serrano into the fold who, by the way, worked as vaqueros raising the cattle, you know, for the mission. When Mexico gained its independence, it eased trade restrictions, and the trade in hides really went into a boom. And this attracted Americans, including one Jedediah Strong Smith, 1826, Jedediah Strong Smith, American explorer, mountain man, arrived with a party at the Asistencia San Bernardino. And they ended up asking, where are there people of importance? Since they were explorers and they were trying to figure out who, what, where. And they ended up borrowing some horses 
they traveled west along the Cucamonga Road, which will later become Arrow Highway, and they stopped at the Cienega, the Mud Springs, then what will later become San Dimas, and camped there, and then made the rest of the journey to Mission San Gabriel, where they were greeted warmly. They were welcomed. The governor of Alta California, however, did not view this as a good thing, and he had them arrested and brought to San Diego. And there it was decided that first they're just going to basically lock them up and throw away the key. But there was an American sea captain who intervened and what was decided was you know, Jedediah would end up basically going back the way he came. Well, Mr. Smith interpreted that very, very loosely. He traveled back to Mission San Gabriel, traveled east along the Cucamonga Road, and when he reached the Assistencia, he decided he'd gone far enough back the way he came, and he turned left and went north. A year later, an attack by Mojave ended up driving Smith back towards California. Later, Jedediah would end up returning with another party to Alta California, and he went to the Asistencia, and he traveled to Mission San Gabriel again, and he was greeted warmly again, and this time he went north, and he stopped at Mission San Jose. As luck would have it, he ran into the same governor, and he was arrested again, seem to have a lot of bad luck. In November of 1834, Mission San Gabriel was turned over to a civil administrator and the lands were secularized. The properties soon shifted into the hands of families closely identified with military and civil rule and a lot of the wealth was confiscated. The inventory at the time of secularization was 1,600 head of cattle. In less than six years, no more than 100 remained on the mission's account. Nine miles away was El Pueblo de Nuestra Señora de Los Angeles, founded September 4th, 1781, with 44 settlers who each received land. By 1800, there were 29 buildings. By 1841, during the first census, a population of 144, and it grew rapidly. The Mexican War lasted from 1846 until 1848. It's gonna change the fortunes of both Mexico and the United States. It's definitely gonna change the fortunes of California. Governor Pio Pico, governor of Alta, California, he ended up fleeing the Pueblo of Los Angeles before the arrival of American troops. A small number of American dragoons under uh, Stockton arrived August 13th, 1846 in Los Angeles, about 11 miles that way, and it was a near bloodless victory. Well, that didn't last very long. By September 29th, the outnumbered uh, dragoons had been forced to retreat. This was the beginning of the unanticipated California resistance to the American invasion. It was here on January 8th, 1847, 11 miles east of the Pueblo of Los Angeles and nine miles south of Mission San Gabriel that the forces of that same Captain Stockton and supported with forces uh, by commanded by Brigadier General Kearney defeated the last of the California forces when they won this battle and the California forces withdrew that essentially gave 
control of Los Angeles to the United States and also ultimately all to California. And the results of the Mexican War or Mexican-American War, they're going to change things radically for the landowners who are going to have to reapply for patents for their lands, which was a very lengthy, expensive process. It could take as much as 17 years. And they didn't always get their land. Amid decaying buildings, the Mission Chapel functioned as a parish church. When the church asked that lands be returned, some of the lands were. But again, the buildings were still in poor shape. Then in 1908, restoration began. In 1987, the 200-year-old brick, stone, and adobe church suffered major damage during the Whittier earthquake. Emergency shoring of the outer walls had to be installed. While feasibility studies were taking place, the Sierra Madre earthquake of 1991 caused even more damage, but eventually the church was restored. St. Gabriel Archangel's on fire. I haven't really looked at the news because, quite frankly, I don't want to. I'm just going to be hopeful. I know that the last couple of times I went last month, when the mission was still closed, but I was filming outside. I was talking to uh, crew that were working there that were refurbishing things. Like they were refurbishing the pews and such like. So it makes me kind of wonder how it started. You know, for some reason, I started thinking about Notre Dame. But I do hope they can repair it. That's kind of funny. I've been filming sections for the videos and one of the points I've been getting to is landmarks vanish. There, need to, there needs to be documentation. You know, things need to be recorded. So I guess that strengthens my resolve a bit more. So I'm going to drive down the coast and get some more done. In July of 2020, fire completely destroyed the roof on top of the original church sanctuary. Prior to the fire, the mission was undergoing renovation, saving some paintings and artifacts. Investigations have been opened into whether the cause was arson. This was during a time where people were protesting the presence of statues of Father Sarah. The mission remains, but much of the interior of the church that has been photographed is gone. I guess this is why I'm trying to record this. Three Asistancias, one old mission dam, a couple of Estancias, and four missions accomplished. Now to drive the 32 miles to Mission San Fernando. I hope you stick with me.